final topic, uh, still related to these basic kind of geometric uh, topological relationships, is the nearest neighbor analysis. And as I said, for example, the common case is that you have one point in the exercise will have for example, your home location or work location, and then you have to find out out of many possibilities what is the closest shopping center, for example, or what is the closest sports facility, or what is the closest postal office. Uh, and as I mentioned here, we are talking about Euclidean distances, so not yet talking about network distances. Mm. In the notebooks, there is under lesson three notebook called nearest neighbor. Uh, so here again, we'll see how this works with shapely points and then finally maybe apply it on some real world data in geodata frames. Uh, so the starting point is that we have uh, some origin point and then we have a set of destination points. And as you might imagine, we want to find out what is out of these destination points, what is the closest one to the origin point as an abstract case. So you can run these object into the memory. Mm. And then, uh, oh, oh, kids. <laughs> uh, the function that we will be using is shape the nearest points. We could actually mm, mm, quickly check the, no, yes. So shape the nearest points, it takes two input parameters. So geometry one and geometry two, but now we have one origin point and multiple destination points. So let's see. This returns a tuple of the nearest points in the input geometries, so it would then return uh, two points stored in a tuple. The points are returned in the same order as the input geometry, so if we have origin and destination, we will get one origin and destination back from this function. Mm. Okay, so we can't give all these four objects as an input parameter, so we will combine the destination points into a multi-point object. How we do that is that we give a list of the points, so dest1, dest2, dest3 as a list inside the multipoint. Uh, if you run it, you can see it visualized, but we want to store it uh, in a variable. So now we have one object representing all of the destinations. So that matches the definition of this shape the nearest points uh, function that we are using. And then the next step is simply to call the nearest points. Geometry one is the origin point, so orig, then uh, destinations is the multipoint and we get a tuple of two points that are the nearest out of the input parameters. Let's also store that nearest geoms for example so we can have a closer look. So now this nearest geom is a tuple. I'll just check it here. So as you remember, tuples are a bit like lists, but kind of immutable, but we can access if there's three objects in a tuple, we can access them using, in using indices. Uh, so in the first slot, we have a point. Uh, if I print it out, I see the geometry. So it's the origin point as we only gave one option for the origin point. So nearest geom uh, at index zero. And then in the same way, if I look at the slot at index one, then it's one of the uh, destination points 
So it seems to be then destination one, which was closest to the origin point. So this is the basic idea, of course, when putting this into practice in GeoPandas, it gets a bit more complicated, as you'll soon see. <coughs> Did I miss something? <coughs> um, so just to know that the nearest points, it takes two input parameters. It can be a single object or co kind of then this multi or a single point or a multi point uh, could also be a polygon, but then it returns a point. And then it returns the tuple with the uh, with two points from both of these input objects. Okay, so then maybe this is a bit. The next section is a bit heavy, but I'll walk you through it, and then you'll get to go through it again when doing uh, problem four in the exercise. So, how to find out nearest points using GeoPandas? So. Here uh, we have a case example to practice with where we, want, we would want to find the closest address uh, to the centroid of each district. So now we have many addresses and many uh, districts or district centroids and for each uh, kind of for each district we want to find uh, the closest address point. Mm, the input data codes should be readying there. So we have the district polygons and then the address points. We enable uh, the KML driver and read in the files. You can run all these cells. So we have, um, and they are in the same coordinate reference system. This is, of course, important. Uh, we can do this in uh, VGS84 uh, as well. Of course, the distances, if we would measure, measure distances, th those would be not in meters. Uh, and then furthermore, based on the case definition, we want to calculate centroids for these districts. So in data frame one, we have the polygons. And then I calculated a new column with the centroids in there. Okay, mm. uh, so maybe I don't know how to best explain this, but the point would be to check for each in this uh, district data frame for each row for this centroid out of all the address points, what is the closest? So you have these nearest points origin point, then destination points, all these address points, and then get as a result some attributes related to that address point. So there's a bit more happening in there and how we have solved this is uh, using a function which looks like this. Uh, we can define it, run it, I'll quickly explain what is happening in here. Um, so as we have learned, if we apply functions to pandas data frames or geo data frames, we all always deal with one row at a time. So as I mentioned, for each row, we want to access this point as the origin point and compare it against all the address points. So when defining such functions, we first have the row as the input parameter. Uh, then, of course, we somehow have to access all the address points from this other data frame. So I have a parameter for that. Mm. Then there are uh, some parameters with a default value. We might have to change this later. But I could say that by default, I want to search for the origin points from geometry column. But then as we now calculated the centroid, so we later want to specify that no, actually we want to have the origin from that row from centroid column. Uh, and then value column refers to the other geodata frame. So then from the other uh, geodata frame, we could join the geometries. So the nearest point geometry, or then also some other attributes from there. And then it proceeds, it takes the other geodata frame uh, 
this will check a bit later, but this does the multi point for the destination point. So it takes the column, geometry column from the addresses in this case when we apply it, and then makes a union out of those points as the, well, it could be destination points, but here it's other points. Mm. Then we do the nearest point uh, calculation. So for, the, for that one origin point from the specified column, so the centroid, uh, we want to compare against all these other points. So the multipoint that we create in here, uh, store that. We get the tuple, as we just learned, uh, in this nearest geom object. And then in the second slot in the nearest geom object, we have the destination geometry. We locate the row from the other geodata frame where that uh, geometry is present. Uh, at this point, this will be a data frame. And then from, from that data frame, we then fetch the actual values. Okay, so this is already a bit heavy to read. Uh, we might as well just run it and see how it goes. Mm, before doing that, what was I supposed to show? Uh, so just to see what this uh, unary union does, I'll just copy this one. Uh, and you remember we have this data frame 2 has our... Uh, just add a column. So data frame two is our address points. So if I take the geometry column and make a unary union out of that, I'll get a multipoint object. So it unions the points, uh, points, and if I print that, uh, you can see how it's then defined. So there's there's now these thirty four points, I think, or how many were they? in the input data. So that this is just to exemplify what happens on this row of the, of the function. Mm. Then finally, when we apply this function, which is a bit complicated, I must mm, admit. So we take the data frame dot f apply, and then we apply the function. Uh, so what was the name of this function? When applying these more complicated functions with multiple parameters, I often just kind of copy paste the function definition with all the parameter names uh, and then start modifying that to get everything right. So inside this apply, I uh, take this. And when applying functions to data frames, uh, we just give the function name and then when doing that, then this row parameter always gets each row of the data frame. Hmm? So we don't have to specify row equals something. When we do data frame dot apply uh, down in here, function name without the parentheses. So that syntax means that it will kind of apply the function for each row and then the f kind of input parameter for this function will be a row of the data frame. Other geo data frame is then uh, data frame two, which was our addresses. Uh, point column from this data frame is centroid. As we had this, maybe I'll put it in here, data frame one, oops, head, so we wanted to find out the closest point for each centroid, so we can modify it in there. Then the value column, we can first keep it as default, so we can even, well, we can leave it there, why not? Let's still see, there's something busy, missing, but I'll just run it to show you what is wrong in here. So by default, when you apply functions on data frames, it does it uh, on axis zero. And now I get an error uh, that centroid occurred at index name. So it's kind of applying the function wrong way around and we need to specify, specify for it to apply the function for each row, which uh, happens like this. So axis one, Ooh, what do we have now? 
Okay, there is some warning, but let's ignore that. I need to check the installations. If I run it again, I should get rid of the warning. Hmm, okay. Don't mind that. But now that I apply the function with these uh, parameters, we get a series of points because uh, this one here is a series of, or for each row, it's, it's one value, and then for each row, then it's a series of values. If we want to get some uh, more useful information out of the second data frame, for example, the address, so then in this function call, which we really have to change, uh, we could then specify address. And then I would, for each row, I would get the address of the closest. Uh, point. And then I might want to store the results somewhere. Uh, so then I will add a column data frame nearest data frame one head. I'll show it in a bit. No. What did we do? Data frame one. So then I apply the function, I get a series as uh, as a result and then I store the result in a new column. Never mind the little error. Uh, this might be go a bit kind of, or it might be a bit, bit difficult to grasp and this is not maybe the most excellent function there is, but the point there indeed is that for each row we apply this nearest point function and in exercise four you can either define a function or you can also solve it just by using this uh, simple approach where you have this nearest point shapely nearest point, some origin, some set of destinations, and then print the result. Okay, uh, so that's quite a heavy package for one Monday evening. Uh, I basically already described the exercise, um, but the most important hint is that pay attention to coordinate reference systems. Uh, in the exercise, as I mentioned, the task is first to geocode shopping center, so you need to create a text file from scratch. Then you create buffers, there's instructions how to do that. So we buffer the shopping centers. Then we join uh, population data to the buffers and finally calculate some statistics out of there. Yeah.